Hi, I'm Pete Jackson from Jackson 5 Medicine, and by the end of this video, you should know what the JVP is, know how to measure the JVP, and be able to draw the JVP waveform, and know what each part represents. Firstly, what is the JVP? The JVP is a clinical sign which allows you to estimate the central venous pressure, or right atrial pressure. And you can do this because there are no valves in your internal jugular vein. This allows a column of blood to track up as your right atrium contracts and relaxes. Now being able to estimate this increase in pressure and also being able to interpret more specific waveforms can be a really useful clinical sign when diagnosing certain cardiac conditions. Next, measuring your jugular venous pressure. The jugular venous pressure should be measured with the patient lying at 45 degrees looking off to the left. You should then look at the medial aspect of your clavicle and then inspect up the medial aspect of sternocleidomastoid, finishing behind the earlobe. And you should see the small flicker of the JVP somewhere along this line. The measurement is the vertical angle from the sternal angle to the top of the JVP waveform and should normally be less than three centimeters. If you're struggling to see it, you can push in the right upper quadrant in order to elicit the patojugular reflex. And this should just accentuate the JVP that little bit. Now, distinguishing this from maybe your carotid artery and your parotid pulse is quite important. So just remember that the JVP should be able to be obliterated, you shouldn't feel it pulsing, it should have a characteristic double waveform, be occludable and vary with respiration and position. So next, let's look at drawing the JVP waveform itself. Now first, we just label up the axes. So, we're going to draw our y-axis and our x-axis. And across the bottom, we're going to put time On the y-axis, we're going to put pressure. Now, as we said, the JVP has a characteristic double waveform. It's going to be represented in this. So, you start with an ascent, with a small notch. We're going to drop down, we're going to come back up, leave a little flick like that. Now, each of these peaks and troughs is represented by a letter. So, this first peak, is your A. This next peak is your C. This next peak is your V. And the first trough is your X. And this last one, your Y. Now, obviously these all represent different things. So let's start with A. This represents your atrium contracting. And as this contracts, it increases the pressure this is what gives you your first peak. And as the atria relaxes, it just drops down and you get this small, small notch here. And this C represents, as your ventricles contract, it pushes your tricuspid valve into your right atrium. And this just increases the pressure ever so slightly, giving you that small peak there. Now, as your ventricles begin to relax in late systole, this gives you your X descent, where everything in the atria is just relaxed, and nothing's really happening there. Now, you get this V ascent, because after they relax, they begin to fill again with blood. And this will just keep increasing the pressure in that right atrium. And now you get your Y descent. And this is because when enough blood fills that atria, it's just going to build enough pressure to allow it to pass into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. And this will give you a drop in pressure in that right atrium, giving you your wide descent. And this cycle will just continue and continue. So that's the end of the video. You should now know what the JVP is, be able to measure the JVP, and know how to draw the JVP waveform, and know what each part represents. Thanks very much for watching. This has been Jackson 5 Medicine, and I've been Pete Jackson. And if you want to know a little more about abnormal JVP waveforms and what can cause them, check out the blog down below. Thanks very much for watching.